up here on Weather Underground, the first signs of the winter season, they are making their debut. That's right, a lot of places with Weather Underground. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. Uh, thinking sea pods. Some folks this morning might have been thinking igloos. <laughs> I know, right? Because we woke up <laughs> with some big, fat flakes. We'll show you those in just a minute. But I want to show you our top stories for this Friday as we coast you into the weekend. Uh, may not be the easiest start across portions of Maine. We've got a flood threat there where heavy mm -hmm. rain continues to fall. Other spots feeling a little <laughs> chilly. I can't even remember the last time we showed blue on the map, yeah. right? That is the light snow that's falling for us today. The reason being is that a lot of cold air, and there's a lot more where that came from, too. Yeah, so uh, don't think we're running out anytime. Nope, it's going to mm -hmm. be uh, uh, the reinforcements are coming. Yes, we're going to yeah. spread the wealth. Absolutely. <laughs> across so, much of the east. Yeah, you watch this across like the Gulf Coast, and you're alone. Glad it's not me. Oh, just you Be wait. Careful. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. But it's all about the Great Lakes, that northern tier this morning, fall and winter kind of colliding. This is St. Paul, Minnesota with, again, those. So, again, it's it's not long-lasting snow. These are these are these quick hitter snows. Uh, our winter weather expert, Tom Nizzle, used to call it snow for show. It's not going to do much in the way of uh, having problems for you out there on the roads or anything, but something pretty to look at. When we look at White Bear Lake, areas north of uh, St. Paul, North St. Paul, picking up just over an inch, about one and a quarter inches. Minneapolis, over an inch, 1.1 inches coming down there. Brooklyn Park picked up an inch and a half, and then in Stillwater, an inch and a half. Stillwater very close, uh, again, to White Bear Lake. So all around that region, it was not a lot, but it was enough to look awfully pretty, uh, kind of weigh down some of those leaf trees as well. We look at where the snow is falling right now. Sections of Wisconsin getting the snow, the UP of Michigan getting some of the snow, and Bemidji still reporting snow, a temperature of 34. So again, with those temperatures pretty marginal, if even a little bit above freezing, you're not going to have that snow sticking to the pavement. It's not going to be an issue on the roads. Wausau, you've got snow 35 degrees. Green Bay's at 41. So uh, some cooling. Again, you're reporting clouds right now. I think you'll see some evaporational cooling drop that temperature a little bit. And so you may see a rain snow mix working into the Green Bay area soon enough. Now, big picture, a lot of the Midwest is pretty quiet, but we've got that little area of snow and then some rain back through parts of South Dakota and parts of northern Iowa. And you can see as we move through the rest of today, we'll keep the snow confined to portions of northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan. So we're not looking at a lot of coverage. If you're you're in Chicago, it's going to be rain for you. If you're in parts of Iowa, rain for you. Same for Indiana, rain. And could see some heavier downpours embedded in there. Maybe even a few wet snowflakes mixing in. If you live up in northern parts of lower Michigan or up into sections of Wisconsin, water vapor imagery showing that low. You can see the overall rotation. So we've seen these disturbances spinning down uh, even behind our front. More areas of active weather, whether it's been rain, thunderstorms. Remember, so we had the cold front move through. Then in Wisconsin, we had the tornadoes on Wednesday. And now today in Wisconsin, we've got the snow showers. Had a few snow, sh a few showers yesterday. But when we look at that low level spin, you can see these spokes continue to work through portions of the region. And then next week, early next week, look at how pronounced that dip in the jet stream is. This is going to be a, a strong front, Mike, and this is going to bring that cold air all the way, I gotta like bend over, get way down there, <laughs> all the way down into the deep south. Our oh. map's gotta go lower, right? I gotta that's, go. That's I don't back. know if my knees can do it. I'm in my late 30s. All the way down <laughs> get to the deep squats. south. Yeah. All right. Hold your quads. It's Way to the deep south. Everybody's feeling the chill. Everybody. It's it. They're encompassing a lot of this, uh, a lot of Maine, a lot of New England states this morning. But what we've also got across the state of Maine is some heavy downpours. And so that's going to actually give us a little bit of a flash flood threat. I think we could see some localized flash flooding issues. Portions of 95 right now, seeing some of the steadier, heavier rain showers. So Augusta down to areas north of Portland. And with some more persistent rain showers throughout the day, again, higher totals piling up here across Maine. Have a little bit of rain shower activity moving off towards the east of Boston. So uh, as you take off out of Logan, may notice that out the window before you make the turn, unless you're, unless you're going overseas, in which case you don't even mind going through that, right? You're getting somewhere cool. Del Mar near Albany had a small section of Route 85 in the town of Bethlehem closed between Mullins Road and Kenwood Avenue at the underpass because of high water in Frankfort Township there up along Pennsylvania, North Jersey. We had a report of flooding on Route 206 in Frankfort and Sandyston. And then in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, reports of flooded roads around the area. So if you were trying to go into downtown Bethlehem, headed to the casino over there, I think it's the Sands, you could have been uh, up against some issues with the flash 
flooding. So high water, already a calling card of this system. And with that rain still falling across sections of Maine, got to watch for more flash flooding potential. So Augusta, Portland right now, low to mid 60s with rain. Bangor at 66 with rain. Bar Harbor 64 with rain. Again, that fall foliage. It's a tough day to get out there and view it because you, know, you like some clouds, but it's a really muted gray today with the uh, gray skies and the persistent rain. But the flood watches continue for parts of New Hampshire and into Maine, although the rain has begun to move out of the state of New Hampshire, really focused into Maine. Water vapor imagery showing us the story, really. Where is the moisture? The Cape up through Maine at this point. So as that front continues to slide through, drier air moving in behind it. So parts of New York and Pennsylvania, you've already dried out. As we move through the rest of today, you can see rain is persistent in Bangor all the way into the later evening hours. So it's going to be continuing to pile up. That's why we've got the flood threat, Mike, but moving out as we move into the second or the uh, afternoon hours on Saturday. You know, what a shame, too, because you showed that picture of Bar Harbor. It's perfect, perfect blue. Now things will be cooling off behind our front and behind our second front that Mike just showed us. Average low in Nashville is 51 degrees. Sunday morning, we're still above that by nearly 10 degrees. Degrees, low around 60, but look how things change into next week. Monday morning, low of 48, pretty close to average. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're at and then slowly dropping below the freezing mark. 30 forecast low for next Thursday morning. So sub freezing or near freezing through the middle and end part of next week. That means frost certainly on the table and may have to go out there and scrape off the windshields or, um, send somebody out there to do it for you. Uh, sometimes it requires a bribe. I'm okay with that. High temperatures tomorrow, 90 in Oklahoma City, 90 in Little Rock, 80 in Nashville, 81 for Atlanta, 77 in Asheville. So you're out there taking a look at the fall foliage. Should be a really nice afternoon in Buncombe County. Average last 90 degree day across the Southern Pla Plains. For Wichita, it would be late September. Same for Oklahoma City, Dallas, October 8th, Houston, October 7th. So we are beyond that in all of these cities, and we could be looking at some higher heat into the weekend with those high temperatures possibly around and even exceeding 90 degrees. But as things go up, they must go down, and we know even across parts of the southern plains that chilly air is coming. By next Tuesday, 235 million people below average as that front moves in, settles in, and spreads the wealth in terms of the cool. Wednesday morning lows, 41 in Dallas, 46 in Houston, 49 for New Orleans, mid-30s from Little Rock to Atlanta. How about upper 20s in Asheville? 36 in Raleigh, North Carolina. So a lot of places will be on the chilly side. Wednesday morning, these lows, we have seen them since early to mid-April for Little Rock, for Jackson, for Montgomery, and for Atlanta. So it's been, I would say it's been a hot minute, but Mike, it's been a, a cold minute since it, we've done that. It's about. I told you, changes are coming. We've got rain, we've got thunderstorms, and we've got this all along a potent cold front that's going to really cool off our temperatures as well. So a closer look at where we're headed in the Dallas area. Again, 41 days. The last time we got rain was back on September 2nd. I was going to say, it doesn't feel like it's been 41 days, but yep, the early September, it's been that long. So 41 days, and since we had a tenth of an inch, it wasn't even like we saw a huge amount of rain. But look at Sunday's forecast. Thunderstorms moving in. May even see a shower storm late Saturday, but Sunday really will bring the better chance chance by Sunday night temps in the low 60s but much colder air works in for the start of next week. Rainfall totals are not going to be overly high. A place like Dallas, a place like Houston and Oklahoma City, less than an inch, what we're thinking. Where we could see some one to two inch totals would be over towards the state line in New Mexico, down towards Del Rio, and even Corpus Christi to Brownsville, southern part of the state, could see a little bit more. So one to two inch totals there. Water vapor imagery, take a look at what's been happening across the west. Have a blocking pattern with our low to the south, area of high pressure that's keeping things very warm and dry across sections of the West. You know, they'd like to go out and enjoy it, but as Jordan Steele pointed out, it's still been so smoky across a place like Seattle that you know, you don't really get out there and enjoy the warmth, but there's that upper level low that continues to get trapped. It spins off the coast. This is going to help to funnel in some moisture across sections of the south as it also gets moving into the southwest over the weekend. That'll also help to enhance our rain chances with our system. Uh, joining forces with a stalled frontal boundary that focuses all of our moisture helps to pump in some of the moisture and so this low is just basically giving us some lift a forcing mechanism to see some wet weather that's what we've got coming in and again our cold front then following that bringing showers and thunderstorms across the country into next week and the cooler days ahead mike
All right, so let's talk a little. Our little, um, the walkways in between the buildings. Because, yeah, although this isn't that cold. I feel like for you guys in Minneapolis, you're like, all right, this first 38 is brisk, but let's be real. By 38 in spring, you're going to be in shorts at this point. Uh, up towards the north, Brainerd, you've seen a few snow showers. La Crosse seeing a few snow showers. Portions of Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan, that's where the snow is coming down. Just to remind you what's on deck. They're like, hey, me again. I'll, I'll be here before you know it in full force, but just wanted to give you a little appetizer in the meantime. Average date of first measurable snow for the city of Minneapolis on average would be November. So this is a little bit early. Remember, they got just over an inch there, so they have now seen their first measurable snow. October, a big month, though, for parts of North Dakota, northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the UP, and then back into parts of the West. So not necessarily unusual this time of year to get snow, maybe a little early for Minneapolis, but even so, wouldn't be completely out of the realm of, of normalcy or something that you could expect to see. I remember, you know, Syracuse, we usually get our average first snow in the month of November, but there were a few Halloweens where it certainly was snowing when I was there. Omaha, you've got rain showers all around you, north, south, east, and west. Again, some of the more persistent snow falling across sections of Wisconsin, then up into the UP right now. That'll continue to stay focused up there in the northern Great Lakes. So we've got these disturbances, these spokes rolling around our main area of low and that's going to trigger a little bit more in the way of wet weather for Minneapolis this afternoon. Instead of snow though, it will be rain showers for MSP during our Friday afternoon drive. Mike? Yeah, cold rain showers.